I feel I should seize the opportunity to introduce you to a friend of mine. This friend of mine is a mathematician. And because you know most of you are in university, secondary schools, and, and some of you like to run away from mathematics. <laughs> But this friend of mine is a mathematician, but he's a Christian too. He quotes the Bible. And he thinks every situation in life can be reduced to mathematical formulas. So he was talking to me not too long ago, and he said some very interesting things. He's a very funny man. If you know him, you might think he's a genius, but you might not be too sure, you know. He's very funny. He, he was saying something like this. He said, uh, when you put your money in the bank, the bank is supposed to pay you interest. Is that correct? I can't hear you. He said, if you put your money in the bank and the bank does not give you interest, the bank is a thief. He said, if you now put your money in the bank and the bank does not give you interest, but charges you, he said, the bank is a thief squared. Do you agree? He said, if you now go back to the bank and say, ah, what's the problem? I brought in my money. You didn't give me interest. Instead, you took part of my money. And therefore, I want to take my money. And the bank again takes part of your money. Ah, he said, the bank is now a thief cubed. That's the kind of man I'm talking about, so you know it must be funny. And he, he was talking to me about something very serious. And he said, Jesus was a mathematician. And that he is very, very good in calculus. How many of you know a little bit of mathematics? All right. I, I, I know many of you would do because <laughs> we're talking to youth and young adults. So I said, is that so? He said, oh, he was very good in calculus. He said he, he, he gave one of the biggest formula in integral calculus. So I was wondering where that is in the Bible. He said it is in Matthew chapter 10, verse 40. Matthew 10, verse 40. That's where Jesus Christ said, He who receives you, receives me. And he who receives me, receives him that sent me. He said, He who receives you, receives me, is a single integration. He who receives me receives him that sent me then became a double integration. I said, I see. Now when he begins to talk like that, it's not long before you begin to hear him talk about corollary. Those of you who are students, you know what a corollary is. It's something that follows from what you have just said. He said, if... He who receives you receives me, and he who receives me receives him that sent me. Then corollarily, he that rejects you rejects me, and he that rejects me rejects him that sent me. Do you agree? I, I think that's, that's the simple logic. And he went on to corollary two. He says, he who attacks you, attacks me. 
And he who attacks me, attacks him that sent me. Do you agree with that? So he went on to corollary three. And says, since Jesus was talking about the one who sent him being God the Father, and the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 29, I told you you can quote the Bible, that God is a consuming fire. He said, Jesus is saying, therefore, he who messes with you, messes with me and he who messes with me is messing with the consuming fire ah, i say i see he said you see that is why then he quoted again he said in hebrews chapter 10 verse 31 hebrews 10 31 say it's a dangerous thing to fall into the hand of the living god he said it is a fearful thing. He said the reason it's a fearful thing to fall into the hand of God is because God is a consuming fire. And that fire burns quietly. He said anytime you hear fire burning somewhere, if you hear any noise at all, it is not the fire that is burning. It is the things that the fire is burning that will be making the noise. He said the reason it is fearful to fall into the hand of the living God is that God fights quietly. That many a times when God is fighting somebody, the fellow will not even know until it is too late. He said, and one thing about fire is that it burns irreversibly. That there is no science that can change ashes back to wood. That when God fights, whatever he destroys can never be restored. Tell your neighbor, don't mess with me. Uh, <laughs> Now, this is my friend, and I will tell you many other things he says in the future, if I have the opportunity. This, my friend, has, uh, he loves some big English. Anybody who agrees with him, he will say the fellow is concentric. Anybody who disagrees with him, he will say the fellow is eccentric. So, next time I see him, if he asks me what, how many kind of people do you talk to, I will want to know. So those of you who agree with him, those of you who are concentric, I want you to say I. Those of you who disagree with him, who are eccentric, I want you to say nay. Uh, the I have it. Let somebody shout hallelujah. 